Howdy everyone, this is Mr. Kazi again, and today we're going to talk about light as a particle. We've been talking about light as a wave, and we've been talking about the wave properties of light and how it's supported by James Kirk Maxwell and his equations. But in the 1900s, it was obvious that light wasn't just a wave, and many scientists began to question whether or not explaining light as a wave was sufficient. There were just some things, such as the photoelectric effect, that couldn't be answered completely by the idea that light was a wave. So some scientists began to develop other ideas. One of the first to do this was uh, Max Planck, and Max Planck suggested that light could possibly be in packets of energy. And he got this idea from his work with certain uh, wavelengths of light. And as he worked with these different wavelengths of light, he began to compare their frequency with their energy. And he realized that the energy and the frequency were directly proportional. The higher the frequency, the higher the energy. And he did several experiments in the laboratory. He developed, collected a lot of empirical evidence. As he gathered this empirical evidence, he realized that light must be in these packets of energy. It can't be just a continuous source of energy. It has to be possibly in these little packets of energy and that these little pieces of energy were quantized. And so he called these little packets quantum. And today we use that word to talk about the quantum mechanics. I believe that was done in his honor. And he also referred to these in the plural as quanta. So Max Planck developed this idea of quantum. And so what is a quantum? And he defined a quantum as a small packet of quantized energy. And today we call these quantized energy uh, photons. Now what do we mean by quantized? Quantized means to be used or distributed in discrete amounts. Like integers, Discrete amounts are not continuous. There's no in-between. It's kind of like a ladder. And when you're on a ladder, you're either on the first rung, the second rung, or the third rung. But you're not on any of the areas in between. You can only be in those certain areas. And that's what it means to be used in discrete or quantized amounts. And you might think about it like this. When you go to a restaurant, let's say you go to uh, McDonald's. And when you go to McDonald's, you don't order one and a half Cokes or two and one-third burgers, you order three Cokes or two burgers or four orders of fries. There are no in-betweens. There's no fractions. There are just discrete amounts. And that's what we mean by quantized. He believed that the photons were these little packets that were used in whole amounts. They were used all at once or not at all. No halves or in-betweens. And so with these quantized uh, photons, he suggested that light could possibly be particle-like, if not particle. And the particle-like characters came from when the energy got high and the wavelengths were short, then you had particle-like properties. And when the wavelengths were long and the energy was low, light was more like a wave. This idea became known as the quantum theory. Now, quantum energy is directly proportional to the frequency as described by this uh, proportional. And the higher the frequency, the higher the energy. When he took the energy and he compared it to the frequency, he kept getting a 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds. Now, this value was constant no matter what the wavelength. And today we call that Planck's constant, and we symbolize it with an H. Planck's equation says that energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. And for wavelength, we substitute in C over lambda, and we get it in terms of wavelength. And this equation was not readily accepted at first, but a young scientist stepped up and helped prove it to be true. Quantum theory uh, states that light is not continuous, but consists of quanta that can be absorbed or released in discrete amounts. The photoelectric effect was one of those things that was not easily explained by light being a wave. However, when Planck put forth his uh, equation, a young man by the name of uh, Albert Einstein came about and answered the question of how the photoelectric effect could be as such. Albert Einstein suggested or used Planck's idea to solve the photoelectric effect, and he used Planck's constant. 
the solution was mass equals h times frequency over light squared or uh, mass equals Planck's constant over lambda times uh, the speed of light. And when we look at this, uh, we realize that Einstein was able to show that these little photons had mass. And if they had mass, then they could be particles. But they only had mass when they were in motion or energized. And so when they had these high uh, frequencies and short wavelengths, they had high energy and therefore they had mass. But the photon's resting mass was zero. They have no mass or no resting mass. So low frequency, sh long wavelength, low energy, no mass or very little mass. High energy, high frequency, short wavelengths, mass or an apparent mass, and particle-like properties. Einstein showed that the photon could have mass. Thus, light behaves like a wave and a particle depending on its energy. Questions? Don't forget to check out mrkazi.com for more information. And also, don't forget, I now have several of these uh, YouTube videos up for you to use to study and prepare for your test. Remember, shoot me off an email to mrkazi at mrkazi.com, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Goodbye and happy ions.